I, I want us to just focus on what God is really looking at in our lives today. I know we got the Christmas tree up, and, and I, it, they did a great job. You know, it looks wonderful. But too many times we place our hope in things of this world that will fail us. We put our hope in, in people, and they fail us. But can I tell you today that we serve a God that will never fail you? So today, I, I, as I was studying this word throughout this month and is trying to really struggle to get this together, the enemy has been fighting really hard this past week. I don't know many, how many of y'all had a rough week. But I was talking with Brother Sean earlier today. He asked me how it was this week. I said it was terrible. Not that anything seriously wrong happened or anything, but the enemy was just roaring around, bothering me to death. How about y'all? We had a great night the other night with Sister Cindy, and we appreciate that. We, that took my mind off of it for about an hour or two. <laughs> but then I woke up the next day, and it was right back there at it. So, uh you know, through our work and different things, it's just the enemy just been, oh my goodness gracious. But I never lost hope. I never lost hope. Because I know where my hope lies in. It doesn't lie in my job. It doesn't lie in the people around my job. It doesn't rely in my family and my friends. My hope remains and relies on the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So as I was studying this and, and getting bits and pieces here, and I was like, Lord, what, what are we doing? <laughs> and God says, remember these things. When we look at this time of the year, we look at so many things that the enemy wants to bring into our lives, depression. He wants to bring in hopelessness. He wants to bring in doubts and fears. He wants, to, he wants us to put our mindset in all the materialistic things of this world. Why? Because people associate Christmas with gifts, not with our Savior. Look at our society today. They have commercialized everything about Christmas. Even more so now because of the pandemic dilemma that they have caused in themselves. Now it's even more saying, look, you need to buy all these things to make yourself feel better about being depressed about the pandemic. That's why things are flying off the shelves now because people are going out and they're just buying, buying, buying. They don't even really have the money to buy with. Hello? How many of us know that the enemy will set us up for failure because he would think we're doing something right? Look, he knows the game too. <laughs> but today, I want us to look at hope. In the sermon today, in my title that I have is Place of Hope. You have your Bibles, turn with me over to, excuse me, Job chapter 6. Job chapter 6. How many of us know that brokenness is a, a hard thing? And in today's society, there is many forms of brokenness. Broken bodies broken homes, broken spirits, just a vast variety of brokenness that is in our society today. And we can't see that because the enemy is letting us put a mask over something that is temporal just for a moment to make us feel better. Oh, I deserve this because I worked all year long and, and you know, and I'm not, hey, 
I'm not saying anything about nobody don't need to buy anything. I'm not saying that at all. But the problem of it is, is that we put our mindset to the point that says that we deserve that because we've done this, not recognizing who God really is and what he's done in our lives to bring us through this. It's not about getting a gift. It's about the intent of the heart over the gift. Can I get an amen on that now? Come on now. Now, I, 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 I'll, I'll take all the gifts y'all buy me. I know that. Now, I'm not going to deny you your blessing. Hello. But if I received that because I said, look, I earned that, I deserved that, no. I received it because I am thankful and grateful that I have friends and family that want to bless me with something. I don't earn it. I don't deserve it. But I'm grateful for it. Hello. I want to look at Job just for a second. We look at Job's situation here, and it started right from the very beginning that the, the enemy was walking around and he was trying to find somebody to cause him to fail. And it just so happened that God said, what about my servant Job? I'm telling you right now, God has more trust and faith in us than we can ever imagine. Hello. Hello. Why would God point out Job versus Bob over there that he knew was going to fail? Because he wanted to show the enemy greater is he than is he. Greater is the great I am than the enemy that does the steal, kill, and destroy. Greater is the God that we serve that will provide whenever the, every, the enemy comes in and takes everything away. Can I tell you today that the enemy can't take everything away? He can't take away the peace, the joy, and the hope. But I'm telling you here now, we can actually give it up. Hello? Job was at a point in his life that I imagine so many of us have been in our homes and things where we look around and we see <clears throat> the enemy just trying to tear everything down and destroy everything. Can I tell you today that I am very, when they sang that song, I, I didn't really think about it at the time, but God brought it to my remembrance of how great he is. How he has kept me and my family where we are. How he has kept me from doing things that would cause harm and heartache to other people. Hello? That he's got in my mouth and my actions because I'm willing to listen to him, but sometimes not always obey. Hello? There's none of us in here that's perfect. There's only one that is perfect. But can I tell you today that we all have a little bit of heartache every once in a while. We all go through some hopelessness every once in a while. We all look at that door. Sometimes we look at that glass half empty versus half full. Hello? Sometimes we have that hee-haw experience, blue despairs and agony on me. Woe is me. Oh, <clears throat> can I, I remember whenever I put the screwdriver through my hand, I was sitting there thinking, I said... All these things that I needed to do, and I couldn't do them because I'm standing there with a screwdriver through my hand. I'm like, are you kidding me? The holidays are coming up. There's so much to do, and this happens? Are you kidding me? And I thought, I can't get them all done. So then I come home, and I aggravate my wife again because I get, continue to do them. They said, how long, it depended on me how long it took the hand to heal. My wife said, it's going to be a couple of years because I won't stop. But we all go through that place of hopelessness sometimes and we have such a burden on us that it feels like we just can't breathe. Come on. 
I'm not the only one. But Job was over there and, and he went through many courses of his actions there. He went through many dilemmas and many emotions from the point of having his whole family die to all of his animals die, not within days, not within months and years, but within moments. Lord, you let somebody cut us off in traffic today. We have a Job moment. Hello. Hmm. We let the teller ring us up twice versus once. Hello. You let us have to wait in line for our food. Come on. You let us have to wait in line to get out of the parade. Yeah, right, Brother Daniel. We have somebody last night give us the good peace sign. Hello. But we all go through them, and Job had such a troubles and trials on his heart and life at that time where even his friends turned his back on him. They said, you must have done something. You must have done something to aggravate God. You must have done something so horrific, but you're keeping it as a secret. Even Job's own wife said, won't you just curse God and die? Because I imagine he was making her miserable too. Hello. But could you imagine sitting there in the bowls, having all those things happen, but yet today we have a few things happen and we freak out. But let's look at chapter 6. There's something that I really want to bring to our attention today. Job chapter 6, start with verse 2. And it says, Oh, that my grief were thoroughly weighed, and my calamity laid in the balance together. For now it would be heavier than the sand of the sea, therefore my words are swallowed up. Father, this morning, God, we thank you, Lord, that you don't leave us right where you found us. God, you're so good to us, God, that you dust us off. You pick us up. You draw us out, God. And, Lord, that you just love on us, Lord, and you give us exactly what we need. So this morning, God, as we continue your service, Father, I pray that you continue to hide me behind that cross of Calvary. And God, that you anoint these old clay lips to bring forth your words. In Jesus' name, and amen. amen. You see, I don't want you to think that it's just you. Hello. It's not just you going through the things of life. Because can I tell you, we're all about seasons. Hello. We all have different seasons. It can't be sunny all the time. It can't be 70 degrees all the time. The fish can't be biting all the time. The deer can't be standing waiting for you to do whatever all the time. We can't be on that perfect vacation all the time. We can't have the perfect children all the time. Come on now. We can't just have the perfect gift all the time. We can't just be in the perfect momentum all the time. There's a time and a place and there's a season under all of heaven that we all go through. But how we go through them depends on us. God's already done his part. Can I tell you that there is a place of hope that we can stay in that will continue to guide and direct us, that will continue to move in our hearts, that will continue to love us through our dilemmas. It's a place of hope. Where is that hope? It ain't at Walmart. Hello. A lot of people think it is. It, it ain't Santa Claus. It ain't the building it ain't the mom and dad. 
It ain't the Christmas tree. It is not the flowers and the seas and the gardens, but it is our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on now. It is who we put our hope in. That is the hope we should be looking to. Every single day is unto the author and the finisher of our faith. Do not let your dilemma dictate your direction. Come on. Do not. Because when we do, we fall back into those moments of depression. We fall back into that moments of heaviness. And can I tell you today that we serve a God that loves us so much that He's willing to every single moment let you stay in that place of hope. Hmm. But you see, we forget about that hope. Today, is the day. Y'all have said it twice. Hello. You've said it online. Today is the day. Let's remember what today is. Turn with me over to Genesis chapter 3. Some of you preachers in here know this. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Come on. You see, we can tell everyone about the church. We can tell everyone about the gathering that we're going to have. We'll, we'll tell everybody about, hey, you just come on over here, we'll do this and that and the other. But can I tell you today about my Jesus? When are those things going to start rolling off of our tongues when we can start telling somebody about our Jesus? It doesn't, we don't have to wait for them to have a good time. We don't have to wait for them just to show up on a Sunday. We don't have to wait for them to show up at just a gathering. We don't have to wait for them to get to work. Let us start telling people about our Jesus. And then they will know the place of hope that they need to be in. Genesis 3, verse 15 it says, that I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Can I tell you that God did not want us to have to go through what we went through. God did not design the garden for us to fail. Hello? God did not give us this life just to walk around with our heads held down thinking that we deserve every punishment that comes our way. God, from the beginning of time, gave us hope. And He reminded us from that very moment that something was about to take place, even though that we messed up, there's still coming a time that's about to take place that we can have true redemption. That we can find that place of hope no matter what comes or goes. No matter how bad we fail, there is still that place of hope that we can go to. And it reminded us that the enemy shall not win. Hello? We, we, we don't read that into the scriptures. All we read is that, okay, yes, they're going to send the sun and this is going to happen. Can I tell you today, this scripture here alone is pure prophecy that shows us that we shall overcome the enemy. Hello? That we have a Savior that is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. Unless you don't believe what you read. Hello? Well, let's take it on a little further then. We're going to go to the great book of Isaiah that our sister Cindy loves so well. Isaiah chapter 7. Turn with me there, please. Isaiah chapter 7, starting at verse 10. And it says, Moreover, the Lord spake unto again to Ahaz, saying, 
Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, and ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ai said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. Verse 13, here it is. And he said, hear ye now. Hear you now. Hear what's about to be read out of this Bible today. O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Somebody needs to be excited about this today to realize that God has already done exactly what he said he would do. He's already said that he was going to give that sign. He's already caused those things to happen, but yet we're still sitting around worrying, why, God? How come, God? How long is this going to take? Why is this over here, God? When we should say, God, you are the author and the finisher, God, and I give it to you, and I place my hope in you. This is where my hope shall lie. Not in the hearts of man, not in the hearts of things, but unto you, God. I give it and I surrender to you. You see, we, we forget about the Old Testament sometimes because we don't, we, we want this New Testament thing that's going on. <laughs> oh, I, all I got to do is just live good. Um, I do good things. Uh, I'll be okay. No. The word says that the only one way to get into heaven. Hello. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my Jesus. This is the time that we need to be at it the most. To show people that there is a God that loves us enough that sent his son to Calvary on our behalf. That we didn't have to. That he took the bruises, just like over in Genesis 3.15. He took the bruises. He took the beatings. He took the stripes. He took the nails. He gave up his life. The word says that no man can take his life, but he lay it down freely. Could you just imagine? I can't. I can't imagine a God that loves me so much that he's willing just to give everything that I might have redemption. I couldn't do it. Could you? No, I doubt it. Thank God we can't, right? <laughs> Thank God that we have a God that loves us beyond all those things that says, yes, you're worth it. Yes, I did it for you. It doesn't matter if I can comprehend it or not. All I have to do is believe it. Hello? Hello? I believe that my God sent his son down from heaven into a nasty, dingy old place to show us that it doesn't matter where we come from, but it's where we're going instead. Hello? And that he raised him up and he called him to be crucified on our behalf. And he rose him from the dead. And yet now he's raised again. Hello, in heaven waiting for you and me. Wow. There's a lot of raising in that, ain't it? Hmm. And I'm not talking about the ones you bake with either. Hello. Come on now. I know Colton over here's thinking about cookies already. Just saying. But can I remind us today that we serve a God that loves us? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 6. It says... It, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That was well before the New Testament. Hello. A promise of a place of hope was on its way. And can I tell you that it's here today? It's here today if we're willing to say it is here today. Our God loves us that much. He loves us enough to give us that place of hope. Turn with me over to uh, Titus. Titus. 
Titus chapter 3. Can you read my own writing here? Titus chapter 3. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Start with verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Wow. That's the place of hope I want everybody to know about. That's the place of hope I want everybody to be. I want that place of hope that whenever they know that when times get tough, they can run to, that they can cling to, that they can call upon it and know that it is near. Psalms 39. Turn with me there, please. I have these scriptures written down. If anybody wants them afterwards, that's fine. Many times, how many times we've prayed stuff we didn't even know what to pray or how to pray it? I've been in times in my life where I said, God, I just don't, I just don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say, Lord. I, I don't, I can't even fathom how to say this. And then I start reading the word and I say, you know what? I can pray that. You know, it's okay to pray these scriptures. Hello? That's what they're for. They're not just to read. They're not just to take a Xerox copy of it and put it on the wall and go, oh, there it is. But we can pray these scriptures as well. You'd be amazed at how wonderful it works when you know that place of hope you can go to. Psalms 39, start with verse 7. Here's me. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgression. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Amen. Amen. Lord, I wait on thee. My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all of my transgressions. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. I don't need something else tingling in my ears. I don't need something else giving me any other advice. My hope is in you, Lord. My place of hope is in you. Whom could I trust? You, Lord. Whom do I believe? You, Lord. I love my friends. I love my family. I really do. And I trust all of you. But not with my hope. Not with my peace. Not with my salvation. My hope, my trust, and my peace is in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Don't put your hope and trust in me. I will let you down, not meaning to. I gave Brother Sean a brad nailer. I thought worked. It didn't work. Had no intentions of giving him anything broken, even though he may have thought that. He's like, all right. He's tired of me bugging him about his, so he gave me something that didn't work. Like, all right, there you go. You see how the enemy can take things and twist it. 
but our trust and our hope should be in the Lord. And if we do that, then we'll know that the intentions of people that are around us, that surround us, are good and pure. But we don't put our faith and our trust and our hope in them. I've heard this song many times, and I, I hear it all the time going to work. <clears throat> now all I hear is them crazy Christmas songs. I'm like, oh, my goodness gracious. Lord, where's the music at? So I, I had to put my phone on sometimes so I can just hear my worship music that I want to hear. But the song is, and I know maybe y'all may have heard it. It says, let me tell you about my Jesus. Are you the past a point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling cause shame's done all its stealing? And are you desperate for some healing? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Who would take my cross to Calvary, pay the price for my guilty? Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. You see, I found out this girl is what, 19 years old? And she has such a powerful testimony that she was so willing to put it into a a lyrics and song that we could be inspired to tell somebody about our Jesus. I know you sitting in here right now can relate to some part of this song. Of the things that we carry around, the things that we deal with, the things that we see that we shouldn't see, the things that go on in our lives that shouldn't go on in our life. But there is a place of hope that we can cling to. And it's called Jesus. We need to start telling people about our Jesus. Not about our Christmas plays, not about our dinners, not about our social activities, but what about our Jesus? You want to do something great this year, tell somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah. Stand with me this morning. My prayer this morning, Psalms 39, verse 7 and 8, And now, Lord, what I wait for, my hope is in thee. Deliver me from all of my transgressions. Deliver me not into the foolishness of men. Don't let me be tempted by the foolishness of other people. But let my hope and my trust remain in you. How about you today? How about you? Where is your place of hope at? When my kids were small, I knew where their place of hope was, and it was in me. It was to protect them, to provide for them, to shelter them, to love them. But as they have grown and and I have grown in the Lord, I realize that the protection and 
the hope, place of hope that they needed was in the Lord. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I have a God and you have a God that loves you enough for you to realize that the true hope that we all need is in Him. Only He can do all those things. We can be the vessels for Him, but He does those things. With just a whisper of His voice, He can raise the dead to life. With just a whisper of His word, He can heal the cancer. With just a whisper of His word, He can cause the lame to walk. Just think, if he whispered in your life what he could do. Let's tell somebody. Let's tell everybody about our place of hope. This morning, I want you to just have your time with God. If you have a need and you want us to believe with you, that's great. But I need you right now. We sung that song, How Great Is Our God? How Great Is He? He's only as great as you let Him be. Where is your place of hope? Let's get to that place of hope to where we can share it with others. Hallelujah.